Okay, so we have our, our IP addresses for the uh, management setup. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our VLAN list. Um, this is uh, another, uh, another key, key piece um, that's important to understand. So the, the VLANs that are set up in UCS are simply a mirror of what is configured to come down those uplink trunks that we talked about, right? So in your network, you'll have your, your upstream switches that have a, a list of VLANs. That list of VLANs is the v, are the VLANs that, that you want to expose to any server. So it could be VLANs 10, 20, and 30. It could be a huge list. It could be big. It could be small. It doesn't really matter. The point is, is that all of the VLANs that you want to expose to any of the servers in your UCS pod are going to have to be listed here on the VLANs uh, list here. So I'm going to click create VLANs. So in my setup, it's pretty straightforward. We, we only have one or two VLANs that we're, we're trunking down. So um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to bring up uh, my switch here and, and actually show you that. So if I go to the 4900M, I'm going to do a, uh, a show interface um, 10 gig 1 slash 1. Uh, actually show run interface 10 1 slash 1. So as you can see, um, I've got 190, 200, and 200 to 202. Now, as you can see, the mode is trunk, and I have port fast turned on because there's no spanning tree going on from the fabric interconnects up to this switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror this list. And VLAN 1, by default, is the native VLAN, which is untagged. And that's, by default, exists in UCS as well. So what i got to do here is got to create VLAN 90. And the VLAN ID is 90. And I'm, there's no sharing. So there's no private VLANs going on. And it's common to both the A and the B fabrics. I want VLAN 90 ex exposed to both fabrics. So I'm going to say OK. And then the other VLAN uh, are going to be, uh, the other VLANs I think are going to be, yeah, 200 to 202. So one thing that's kind of nice is um, you can put a naming prefix like the word VLAN and do 200 to 202 and say OK. And it'll go ahead and, and create uh, the other VLANs for you uh, in a group. And as you can see, the native VLAN across the trunk is, is VLAN 1. Um, and all the other ones will be tagged. And that's exactly how we want it. Now, it's incredibly important that the VLAN that is the native VLAN on the trunk match this. It's incredibly important or else data will not flow. If you want to change the native VLAN, all you have to do is click on the VLAN number and then right click and then say set as native VLAN. It will go ahead and change that for you. So that's really important in terms of the, in terms of the VLANs. The next thing we're going to do is set up some map pools. Now in UCS, we assign the, the MAC address of the interface cards on the servers themselves by using these pools. And there's, there's reasons you want to do that and not use the burned-in address of the adapter. Um, using the burned-in address of the adapter actually limits the, the flexibility that you have uh, to move workloads around from blade to blade. So what we're going to do here is create a couple of simple MAC pools. We're going to create a MAC pool. Generally, what I name it is Fabric A. Uh, and Fabric B, because you know some MAC addresses are going to go to the A side and some are going to go to the B side. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, set this up, and we're going to add. We click Add, and what I generally do is I use the third octet from the end, and I make it a zero. So that way, I know that when I see a zero MAC addresses in my upstream switch, I know they're coming from the A side. And in general, I, I make the pools pretty big. I either make them 128 or 256 or something like that. 128, um, it should be plenty in my lab. It's more than enough, but, uh, but I, I just like to make the pools uh, 128 in size or bigger. And then I say finish. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the B side. So as you can see right now, I've got fabric A there, and I'm going to go ahead and, and put in a fabric B. And I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to use B0. And this is something I normally do. Now, remember, <clears throat> if you expect you're going to have multiple pods, uh, obviously, you could use uh, A1 and B1 for the next pod, and A2 and B2, or C and D, whatever you want to use. It doesn't really matter. The, the point is, I'm just doing something 
that I can recognize when I look at my upstream switch. I can I can recognize you know what what belongs to what. It just makes it easier for me. Okay, so now I have those. Now, remember this, the point of these videos is to get you going with a very basic configuration. Um, so in general, um, I really don't have any other uh, config that I do other you know as a as a very basic config other than I like to create vNIC templates. And, and, and what a vNIC is in UCS is pretty straightforward. It's just a, a network interface that's on a server. Um, so in general, uh, you're going to have types of NICs. If you're going to do a, a traditional uh, VMware setup, for example, where you might have you know, eight different NICs. You have one for the service console, one for vMotion, uh, two for iSCSI, uh, two for data, and then maybe you know another two for data or something like that. Um, you would you would have templates that that represent those NICs and and templates. If I if I show you one here, so let's let's say I have a, a bare metal Windows host with one adapter. So we're going to call this like bare metal A, right? And I'm going to point it at Fabric A. I'm going to enable Fabric Failover, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, I'm going to make it an updating template. And what that means is that the updating template means that if I make a change to this template, it will automatically be updated. Uh, if anybody is subscribed to this template or bound to this template, that NIC on that server will automatically be updated, which is good because if I want to add a VLAN or change a VLAN, uh, etc., that that's a good thing. So I'm going to use VLAN 90. So the, the thing to remember here is when I check the box for VLAN 90, it's the same thing as taking a physical network interface on a traditional rack mount server, plugging it into an Ethernet port, and assigning VLAN 90 to that port. That's basically what that is. And by choosing the native VLAN, it means it's like going onto that port and typing switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 90. That's basically what you're doing here. Um, it's very simple. It's very straightforward. It's this server, this NIC that is going to be put into a server is going to be bound to VLAN 90 and can transfer traffic on VLAN 90 in an untagged way as, as an access port. Um, and I'm going to choose the Mac from Fabric A because, as you can see, I called it Bare Metal A and I pointed it to Fabric A, so I wanted to pull a NIC out of that pool. And I'm going to leave everything else default. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another one uh, called bare metal B, right? So I'm going to call it bare metal dash B, and I'm going to put it on the B side. So that way, if I ever wanted to balance my my traffic, I can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead down here, and I'm going to say VLAN 90, and I am going to take it out of fabric B. So now I have a choice when I'm setting up my mix. I could have one pointing to A and one pointing to B and kind of split the traffic up if I want to. Um, so that's basically it on the LAN tab. These are the basic things that I configure. I configure a set of VLANs that match the switches and the ports that are coming down. I choose the appropriate native VLAN. Um, I create a couple of MAC pools for the A side and the B side. And I also create, generally, I like to create a couple of NIC templates. Um, and that's the, that's the LAN tab.